Hi, students. It's good to be here with you again. As we promised you, we'd sit and connect with you a little bit. What you need to look at is when we start your session, you'll see my eye there with the School of the Prophet, and there's this little song playing. Of course, I wrote that song, uh, but you only hear 32 seconds of that song. Now, that song is going to be your song, uh, dedicated specifically for you. I think that's very exciting. Anyway, we have Beautiful. one of my uh, prophetic uh, animals, yeah, and that is... Uh, She's sleeping. <laughs> <Maggie>. <laughs> He's sleeping on the job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, and Jane, of course, uh, is here and um, really runs the whole show at the back here. And Miranda, who assists us and helps us with a lot of things, she's been around for a long time. 25 years ago, the prophet was not a, a um, ministry that was acceptable or even understood. Uh, today, a lot of you are saying, I don't want to be a prophet in, as in the office of a prophet. I want to learn more about perception right. and about being prophetic and and uh, you know uh, um, what's the word I use theophany yeah. having a theophany as a pr as opposed to an epiphany uh, I want to have those moments and be able to interpret them and that's what I'm trying to teach you this is not just a course for education but it's also a spiritual um, there's spiritual implications that come along with it where you discover things about yourself and there's deliverance taking place which I'm very excited about as well. But the office of the prophet is one of the ascension gifts, as you'll read in Corinthians, Ephesians, you'll read about the fact that God sent and has blessed the church with um, f five g ascension gifts. The uh, teacher, the, sh the pastor, the apostle, the evangelist, and the prophet. And then they go on to the different gifts that, that he's given, the gifts of healing, miracles, and so on. What I'm dealing with now is if there is one amongst you that is that that will ultimately be a prophet, as in the office of a prophet, uh, it will definitely show. There's a huge responsibility that comes taking the office of a prophet, and to whom much is given, much is required. And just the people sitting with me, my wife, who's been with me, Jane's been with me for 30 years, under this, and uh, we've discovered as we've gone along, uh, there's so much chaos. And the word chaos, I don't use lightly, that comes along with the office of a prophet <laughs> attacks people coming against you because they don't understand the timing of God. And I'll be honest with you guys, I don't always know and understand the time of God. The Bible speaks about in, in Peter where it says that the prophets knew about Christ, had the spirit of Christ, prophesied about Christ, but never did, could not pinpoint the time that he would come. And, that, and I think there's a reason for that. Well, I'm, I, I didn't choose this. God chose it for me to stand in the office of a prophet, which means you have more keen insight. You have a greater perception. You have a global, universal, a kingdom perspective. And, of course, all of you can have that as well. But where you are required to deal with certain things in the office of a prophet, whereas when you have the gift of prophecy, you have the ability, as you know, to have a perspective that will give you the power to take occupation of or to help somebody else in that, in that understanding and that enlightenment that you have. But I, and in the office of a prophet, I knew my ultimate call, what I was supposed to do, and that was to move from South Africa to come to the United States of America. However, and Jane, that is not a, she doesn't stand in the office of a prophet or prophetess, but <laughs> she, <laughs> she has the gift of prophecy, or she that is pretty. No, no, she has the. Prof yeah. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna um, say, "Thus saith the Lord," and prophesy the people and. <laughs> <laughs> saith, saith, saith uh, the Lord. Yes, she but um, it just means that um, you know you feel something is right. Like when we moved from South Africa to America, it was me that said it's time to leave now. And 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 by the way, just to and that's true. She she does she 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 doesn't prophesy. You know, prophesying is not always as she said. Thus says the Lord. Right. Prophecy is just knowing something, and understanding that, and moving with that. And and by the way, I'm still in nineteen nineteen ninety. Was it that we that she said I was still in South Africa? It's time to pack up. And here's an interesting point. It's time to pack up and to move to America. I said, no, I don't want to leave South Africa now. I didn't think it was the right time. Because in the office of the prophet, you, you, so, you know so much about so many things, but you don't necessarily know when the timing is. 
where she and fit in like a glove. And when it comes to your own family <laughs> right. and surroundings and, and stuff you need to do. Um, Might come from another source. Yeah. That's it's exactly right. It's harder for you to mm -hmm. do that. It is hard because you have to lead yourself. And the best thing to have is a partner that can help you. Yeah, that's a great teaching in itself about marriage. and. That's right. Because, you know, I was right saying right. something the other day when I was teaching. I, you know, without vision, the people perish. In other words, and I was, I was talking to a, a couple that were, were struggling. And I said, you know, the, the thing that keeps a marriage alive is not, is not sex, is not, uh, you know, physical relationships necessarily, of course. But it is friendship and if there's no friendship there's if there's no vision the marriage or the relationship in in any field whether it's in business or in marriage will not last because if you share vision then you're progressing together and that's what i was telling them without vision a relationship perishes without vision a friendship perishes without vision a relationship a marriage perishes and, and so it is with you in your own life. So you have to have vision together. And that's with business. That's in marriage. And so a lot of marriages break up because they don't share a common vision. Mm -hmm. And so they, you have to help each other in the vision. Right. I'm not supposed to be teaching you. But, that's you know, that's an interesting point. Mm -hmm. But it's just something I thought you'd, re you'd understand that a lot of relationships are broken up because they don't share vision. One person has the vision and you'll see he's a great preacher or he's a great uh, whatever. But his, his wife, or vice versa, doesn't share that vision. And so eventually, he well, feels he's not being backed up. Well, have a ministry as well. And so they got separate ministries. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes causes a... Well, look at, Joyce Ma look at Joyce Myers. Joyce Myers is a beautiful example to me of... Uh, he has a woman that has a vision, yes. but her husband shares that vision. Yes. It's not he's as if he's... working he in the background. But, uh, but he's sharing the vision. That's yeah. right. Anyway, it's all interesting. And, uh, you know, I loved some of the stuff. And, Miranda, maybe you can... You can tell me what else you've been reading or you've been sent by the moderators. Yeah. But, you know, I loved what Kay Young said. Okay, I don't know what your first name is, but Kay Young said, this training is amazing. Thank you, Kim and team. Thank you, God. This training has by far been the best investment that I've ever made. That really touched me. Yes. You know, because we had people complaining and saying, you know, we got to pay. Well, it, it costs money for us to do all this. But um, this is what I've been crying out for God for 15 years. It's, it has already and is continuing to change my life. Kim, thank you for sharing your life and demonstrating true freedom in Christ and totally being yourself. I love to hear that because yes. I've tried to be someone else, didn't work. And I, that's why I'm just myself today. And I love that you like that. Thank you for being obedient and blesses our family. And then now, at this stage, you've done eminent uh, perceptions. You've done unconscious perceptions. I know a lot of you are very, very touched by uh, a lot of the ministry and, and, and are raving about the teaching. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't even know that I could teach. <laughs> but um, we've, and now, and now I'm, I've, moved the, I've moved the curriculum around just a little bit because I have to also feel where we should be going next. And I felt that our next one should be secret perceptions. And that's going to be, it's going to blow your mind. Absolutely fantastic. You know, this has been a, a, a learning curve for me myself, but personally, um, just doing the school. It's just been, for, for instance, everybody's asking why are you wearing scarves yeah, and 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 i haven't revealed this yet but i'll tell you guys because you're my first roots <laughs> so um but this i when i had the vision and i saw jesus <coughs> just for that moment that i get a glimpse i saw that he had something around him that looked like a scarf i only saw realized that later on and it's 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 a mantle and it was almost like the spirit was saying to me now it's time for you to cast your mantle Jeez onto the Elisha generation. You've got to the age in your life, physically and spiritually, where you need to cast the mantle upon a generation. You are the first that I'm casting the mantle on. So I'm now, I'm wearing this now. Uh, it's, it's a symbolic thing, of course, but, it, but Elijah did have a mantle. And, and, I, and, and, I, and I may teach this in, in the, in, if we do an extra lesson, I may just do this. But where, when Elijah came to Elisha, Elisha was a farmer, and he was he was um, plowing, and it says he was plowing with the twelfth oxen. So Elijah came along and took his mantle and threw it onto Elijah, Elijah, Elisha. And at that time, Elisha was in a field in the Hebrew. It's, it's Abel Mahola. You can read it in in the Bible. 
he was plowing in Abel Mahola. And that word, that means the field of rejoicing. Mm. And so he was going through training when, when Elijah came and threw the mantle on him. And so he was in the field of rejoicing. That was a good attitude to have. And he was plowing. Mm. He was busy. He was working. He was with the twelve. And he was with, that's right. He was, mm -hmm. Lord. <laughs> that's right. She just corrected me. <laughs> that's exactly what it says. Yeah. How did you remember that? Because I remember your teachings. <laughs> <laughs> he was with the twelfth. That's right. It says he was with the twelfth. He had gone through the government. Twelve speaks of government. You know, I'm teaching a lot of stuff. You shouldn't mm -hmm. be doing this, but the twelve speaks of government. So he'd been through the process of serving, plowing, and now it was time for that Elijah to throw the mantle on him. But Elijah took the mantle back, remember? He just threw it on him. And so... From that point, Elisha followed Elijah in teaching and serving until he got, he crossed over the Jordan, and then he had the mantle when Elijah was taken away. I love that. So I just feel like there's something about that. So that's what I'll be doing. And watch the designs. They're going to be beautiful uh, <laughs> mantles. And, and in some of the meetings, I'll put them on children. Code breakers is a huge thing. In fact, Sunil may want to talk in the yeah. next one, or even now. And we, we have Sunil who heads up our code breakers, and they break the codes. What they basically do is they find a prophecy I've given. They go and do research for me. And they research and find facts to, to substantiate the prophetic word. And, 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 and code breakers is, is just a, can you, are you able to come here, Sunil? Come. Just come sit here for a minute. Um, maybe you could just tell us what code breakers is all about but sunil tell us uh, tell us what is code breakers code breakers came as a result of people attacking me and saying your prophecies didn't come to pass well how do they know who right. knows what's happening in england right now i spoke about the discovery of aids by the year 2004 or something well that's one of the biggest things you'll read is that well it didn't happen well, we're finding out now that that could very possi well, uh, possibly have happened because of reports that are coming around that time that there were, there were discoveries. One person was completely healed without any medication who had HIV, po was HIV positive, and they, they cannot work out how it happened. So we don't know. Codebreakers is basically taking all the information, all the prophecies that you've uttered, and putting the pieces together. Sometimes, you know, you mention about that AIDS prophecy from... Look at this fool. From... He laughs just That's a So... Be good. Be good, Meg. Just, just as you mentioned about that prophecy about AIDS and a cure for AIDS, you know, at that time, it's, been, it's come out that there were in the labs cures discovered. There were mm -hmm. patients who were actually healed. Now there's a there's a time period where they have to certify things. They have to exactly. They have to you know make sure get government approval. So we don't hear about that news, but it's happened, and we find out only later on. Mm -hmm. And Codebreaker, what I love about your prophecies is that you don't speak about things that don't matter to the real world, or ma you speak about things that are very relevant and matter to us. You see, now he heads up Codebreakers. And you hear prophecy, and, and then you see, th you, you see the watchdog group saying, uh, Kim Clement's a false prophet because he said this was going to happen by such and such a time. Who knows? Who knows what happened at that point in time? And suddenly you'll find code breakers going and saying, wait a bit, we just got a report from South Korea that this was happening. And, and they verify it with facts and puzzle the whole thing together and then present it intelligently, not like a bunch of buffoons that are out there trying to find, uh, to stone the prophets. By the way, just one more thing. You know, they, they, people are always wanting, you know, they, pe not people, but bad people are saying, you know, you knew, well, they stoned the prophets in the Old Testament today. You know, we must use rocks to stone them as well. There's, there is a correction. There is an authority. It's called the Word of God, and that is the rock. That is the stone. And if there's any correction that will be made to me in any way, it will be the Word of God, which is my rock. Christ is my rock, and that is the Word of God, and that is my correction. So if anything is spoken and it, and it does not align itself with this Word, this is my correction. This corrects me. And, and, and you must always stay open to that. We love you very much. I could tell more things that have come in, but one of the things that uh, somebody spoke about was the practicing of sin. 
I will deal with that in the, in, uh, again, maybe a little later on, because everybody sins, but the practice of sin is a little, takes a little bit further. And um, it, one of the questions is, do gays and other people who practice sins or the flesh still qualify? I will answer those questions, but get ready now. You're going to be uh, being taught the secret perceptions and absurd perceptions. going to be fascinating. And anything else to say? I yeah, think that that's great. We love you guys. It's just very exciting that you're writing in. Don't stop. Enjoy yourself. You're going to get more knowledge and more knowledge. And, and, and somebody said, thank you for giving us morsels of more feeding us one morsel of divine steak after another <laughs> i'm great at barbecues i love you god bless you